I will show you some um, measurements and also some calculations on the effects of, uh, of uh, running condition of engines and vessels. First of all, uh, as a member of the advisory board, I would like to thank you for coming and a special thanks to all of the authors for making papers and presentations. I know it keeps you nervous until it's finished, but uh, I'm looking forward. Um, the idea for my presentation was to show the effect of the discussed topics uh, on torsion vibration tempers. Therefore, I structured my presentation into five parts. The first part will be a short introduction, and then I came to the main topic, which is called heavy running. First, I want to explain you why uh, we introduced this heavy running power curve, then what are the effects of this heavy running on the design of dampers, and finally, to show some measurements. In the third part, I will short you, shortly show you the influence of the Baird speed range passing on torsion vibration dampers, and then shortly the, in, the influence uh, of navigating in ice, and then I will come to a summary. So on that slide, maybe not everybody is familiar with uh, two-stroke marine applications. So here you can see a typical two-stroke marine application with a torsion vibration damper. And just to get an idea what we are talking about, in the rear we have uh, propellers, they can reach up to 10 meters. We have propeller and intermediate shafts, they can reach up to one meter in diameter. And we have engines, they can reach up to 70,000 kilowatts. And in the front of these engines, engines there can be a found uh, spring-type dampers or viscous-type dampers. And the spring-type dampers, they, today they reach up to four meters in diameter. And usually there's also a monitoring system in front of the engine to monitor the damper. Now the heavy running topic. Why, uh, when especially can heavy running occur? So one reason is due to better weather condition. So you can see here a picture. Also in shallow water, so for example, the vessel is sailing in channels. Also due to high radar angles. And the reason for this heavy running can be due to the derated engines. Uh, I think it was mentioned a few, time, few times on this Congress. Also due to different torque limiter settings and due to hull and propeller fouling. On the right hand side, you can see a diagram, a power diagram. Um, the blue line uh, is the engine torque limit and the green line shows a 100% propeller curve. So this is the demand of the propeller on the engine. But in certain uh, conditions, this uh, propeller curve can reach up to higher and the maximum power demand of the propeller is the so-called Baller pull curve. This depends on the propeller design, but we assumed here a propeller curve, a baller pull curve with 35% higher power than the normal propeller curve. And the so called maximum power area is now this gray area, and this is defined in the lower area by the propeller curve, by the maximum propeller curve, and above this section point, it is defined by or limited by the engine limited curve. We introduced this curve because the polar pull curve depends on the application and also the engine limit. So we have our own curve and we can we run all these uh, TVCs now for the two stroke plants with this uh, heavy running curve to increase the safety on the dampers. When we're applying this new power curve to the torsion vibration damper design, you can see an example on the left-hand side, you can see a five-cylinder engine and the results for a spring-type damper. And here you can see, for example, when applying the heavy running power curve, the twist angle in the damper here in, this, in the bare speed range will increase to about, about 8%. And uh, also an important thing is that the minimum required oil pressure for the damper increases from 1.6 to 1.8 bar. This pressure is very important for our dampers because if the pressure would be too low, uh, cavitation would occur in the damper. On that side, you can see the opposite thing. For an eight-cylinder engine, 
Here you can see on the, on the left hand side the light power curve, so this is due to clean hull and ballast condition. And here you can see that in that case with the 85% power, the highest damper twist occurred. And the reason for this is due to the gas excitations. Here on the right hand side you can see the gas excitations for the 11th to the 13th order and you can see with higher mean effective pressure the gas excitation reduces. That means with lower power the excitation increases and you can see also here the 11th order is much higher on the light power curve than on the heavy running curve. That means for us in the damper design or in the torsion vibration design we have to take different power curves uh, into mind and then we're checking what is the worst case and this is this that defines then the damper design and also the demand for the uh, oil pressure. On these slides I want to show you some measurements. These measurements were also taken last year over a couple of time and the measurements were taken on a five cylinder engine with about 10,000 kilowatts and it was taken on a bulk carrier. Here on the left hand side you can see a measurement um, uh, after the, the vessel increased or the engine speed was increased they were sailing for about 10 hours or 15 hours in good weather conditions at about uh, 82 uh, or 83 uh, RPMs and suddenly they came into bad weather conditions due to this fact the engine speed was reduced and in the same time the shaft power, the master shaft power increases. Um, and also this, uh, this has the same effect on the damper. Also in the beginning the damper twist was at the same level with enough safety margin but uh, over the time the damper twist increases and also comes very close to the continuous limit. On the right hand side you can see the power diagram and actually the vessel started or the engine started at the 100% power curve and when coming into the bad weather the torque in, or the power increases up to the engine limit and then the vessel speed was reduced due to the torque limiter and then they were sailing on this point for a couple of hours and suddenly the weather was improved and then they came back to the 100% power curve. On that slide on the right hand side you can see a sum of the measurements over two months and here you can see that usually the vessel or the engine should operate on the 100% uh, power curve but most of the time the, the vessel was operating above it. So only a few times it was below so I expect in good weather condition and ballast condition but most of the time it was above. And you can see it's all most of the points are below this torque limiter curve or this Geislinger heavy running curve. And you can, if you have a look at the lower spare tree range, you can also see that here also the torque is quite high and above this curve, but usually this area is not so severe for torsional vibrations. Okay, so coming to the next topic about the Baird speed range, we had a look also at these measurements and we took out the passing time of the Baird speed range. And you can see that the Baird speed range for this vessel was varying from 8 seconds to six, 62 seconds. And uh, also uh, quite comparable is the damper twist. So if the vessel is going fast through the bare speed range, the damper twist is quite low at the end of the passing of the bare speed range. But uh, if the vessel takes a long time, it increases. You can also see this on the right hand side. The blue line is the steady state calculation and the yellow dots or orange dots is with the 8 second passing so it's quite below the steady state condition but in heavy running condition the vessel took uh, 62 seconds and also the damper twist was increased. Here uh, we had the idea to scan and uh, to have a look at different layouts and on the left hand side we scanned our database and every dot was a calculation project and you can see the blue lines are five cylinder projects and orange uh, dots are six cylinder uh, projects and here you can see the upper limit of the bare speed range and you can see that the upper the 
more of the, the on the five cylinder engines, more uh, are on the higher range. And so comparing, uh, it depends on which boiler pull curve uh, you take in into account when you're calculating this bare speed range power margin. You can see for an example in that way, uh, the section point is about 75%. So this vessel may have the problems uh, getting fast through the bare speed range. But if you're uh, taking a higher uh, boiler pull curve into account, this can be uh, from up to 60%. So this vessel may have the troubles uh, getting, they may take a long time getting through the bare speed range. Uh, then I scanned also uh, different projects and on the project before, here you can see that uh, also in the bare speed range the damper twist is still below to, to the continuous limit. So that means in that case, if the, bare speed, if the vessel takes a long time through the bare speed range, it would not harm the damper because it's still below the continuous limit. But on that time of this, uh, in this uh, shape of design, so you can see that also the damper is uh, above the continuous limit in the, trans in the bare speed range. And therefore, if this vessel would stay a long time in the bare speed range, also this would be effect. Uh, would we have an effect on the damper twist. On the right hand side, you can see that the damper is designed to protect the propeller and the intermediate shaft. Now having a look at uh, viscous type dampers. On the right hand side, you can see our viscous type damper called V-damp. Um, here is also a comparison between normal power curve and heavy running power curve. And here you can see that applying the normal power curve, there is enough safety margin in the uh, thermal load of the viscous type damper for the normal running. But if you have a look at the right hand side, um, the limit um, is the damper is very close to the limit. So in that case, if the vessel would run a long time on heavy running, it would have a, a negative effect on the viscous type oil. So the viscous, the aging of the viscous type oil will be increased. And another fact is also, you can see a quite high peak in the bare speed range. But on the eight cylinder engine, you can see that the bare speed range is quite low. So in that case, we can assume that the vessel would go quite fast through the bare speed range. And uh, now the last uh, topic I want to show you is shortly the effect of uh, navigating in ice conditions. So if the propeller of the vessel would hit an ice block, this shock torque will go through the shaft line, the engine, until to the end of the damper. And here you can see on the left hand side the steady state calculation. You can see here the torque in the steady state condition, the elastic torque is, is somewhere below 250 kilonewton meters and uh, for the ice calculation it's a little bit above the continuous limit but due to it's a transient condition this is full acceptable. And usually when we make a design for ice class calculations, we usually make a bare speed range free design because uh, during the ice class, uh, to the, during the, the hit uh, um, or the ice impact, um, it can happen that the, the vessel, the engine speed is reduced into the bare speed range and then all the amplitude increases very dramatically and therefore it's easier to make a design with a bare speed range free application. So a short summary. It was shown that uh, the high um, engine running condition only, not only occur for a short time, they will occur also for a longer time period of time. Bare speed range passing is relevant for, for spring type damper, it depends on the configuration, but also on viscous type damper. And we can also manage it to make a selection of spring type dampers for ice glass calculation. And I would like to thank you for your attention. <laughs>